Well, hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. It's nice and warm. It's time to finish up sowing and planting our spring garden. So come along with me. We're going to plant some seeds. So my spring garden is mostly in. It's warm out here. It's in the high 70s, maybe even the 80s. That bed and this bed are planted for spring. I've got my tomatoes doing really well. I have some things in this bed as well, but we've got some open space we need to fill up. So today I'm going to put in some, uh, some transplants, some onion transplants. I'll show you how to do bunching onions. And we're going to put in some seeds. I'm going to grow some cucumbers and possibly if we have some room, we're going to grow some more bush beans. I have several trays of bunching onions. These are uh, bunching types. They don't bulb up. You use them as green onions. And these were sown from seed and I have a video all about these. Um, we're going to go ahead and put these in the garden too, let them get mature so we can start using them. And I'm actually going to dry some of these and keep them stored for use throughout the year. I've pulled away my compost layer to reveal my soil. And I'm just going to go and plant some of these bunching onions just right in the trench here. And they won't be in here for long. I want these roots in touch with actual soil and not all this compost here. And uh, that will give them a, a good chance to get established here. Take some more of this. Just plant them up to the level where you had them in the seed starting tray and they'll do fine for you. They'll start sending those roots down and you'll have a lot of onions here before too long. These should only get about 10 to 12 inches tall before they're ready to harvest. And they'll be like little chives. Now again, these are bunching onions. They're not going to bulb up. So we can really fertilize these with fish emulsion, nitrogen rich fertilizers to really develop this green growth because that's what we want from this crop. It's just that green growth. Okay, now we'll water these in real well and look forward to some onions. Bunching onions. Nice springtime crop. Since I have extras, I may as well plant them in this bucket of soil that's not really serving me right now, doing anything. So I'll just put the rest in here and they can grow up in here and feed us. This is all potting mix. I grew kale and some collard greens and I think some cabbages in here over the winter. And so I know that this bucket can grow food. It's done it for me and currently it's got some chamomile in it. <clears throat> Might as well use it for our extra onions. This will ensure that we get lots and lots of these onions this year what we want. I want enough to dehydrate these onions and save them as kind of like the dry onions you can buy in the spice rack. The chives that you can get at the store. Well I can grow my own here and let's see if it'll work. So I'm going to rake out a fine planting medium. I'm going to draw up some of the soil from down below my mulch layer uh, for these cucumbers and I'm going to make some rows here and smooth them out and get it nice and fine. Today I'm going to be planting a uh, Max Pack F1 Hybrid Cucumber from Johnny Seeds. This is a good pickling cucumber. And I might uh, put a row in uh, in between these two rows of Max Packs of Boston Pickling Cucumbers. Another pickling cucumber. I don't eat fresh cucumbers, but I love a good fermented pickle. That's what we're going to do with these guys, so we've got to have some. It's really easy to plant cucumber seeds, but the soil needs to be warm. You need your days to be in the 70s and your nights not to drop below, say, 50 degrees. And you just take a seed, and I'm planting two in a hole, and you press them in about a half inch down and cover them over. 
you want to pack them in pretty good because you want that contact with the soil. And so I'm going to put a row of these guys here. Oh, about six inches apart, we'll thin them if we need to. And with these hybrid seeds, they're a little bit more expensive than your basic organic seeds. So uh, I don't have enough to complete this row. So we're going to have to complete this row with the organic uh, Boston pickling cucumbers from Baker Creek. That's okay, we can mix cucumbers. They're all pickles. They're all destined for the pickling jar. Doesn't matter if we mix them up a bit. I have this four by four square here that is not planted with anything. Right next to my onions that we just planted. So uh, I'm gonna put in a couple of plants, bush beans. And we will have to thin these as well. These uh, cucumbers are gonna grow pretty large up a trellis that I'm gonna put right here. So uh, I don't know if these are the ideal crop for this area, but I need more beans. So I'm gonna make a furrow that gets me down into my soil, it gets out of this compost layer, which is acting as a mulch. And I'm gonna put in two rows of bush beans right here, about a foot and a half apart, 18 inches. And that will supplement my vining green beans over here. So these are, jade green beans from Johnny Seeds and we're going to see how these do. Now again I'm going to plant these rather dense and come back and thin and just cover them over. A little deep. You want them to be covered about an inch deep that's all. That's all it needs. Well, while we're outside today on a nice warm spring day, let's take a look around and see how things have progressed. The uh, herb garden over here is doing well. Everything's looking nice and healthy. Figs are waking up, starting to look like they are all champs, except for maybe that one there. And there's a couple others in here that didn't make the freeze. But yeah, for the most part, they're coming back. I've been doing little potted projects, and uh, we've got some stuff growing in here that's all uh, looking really healthy. A couple of determinants in here, tomatoes, a couple of miniature dwarf varieties, some perilla, peppers, and uh, some herbs in a pot. Yeah, looking great. Uh, squash is growing, looking healthy and strong. The peppers are a little slow. It's not quite warm enough for those to, to take off. But uh, I had some tomatoes that did not do well in uh, during the freeze. They got stunted. But I'm going to go ahead and give them a try and see if I can't grow them up. and I can give those away or plant some in pots. Tomatoes are looking great. They're about three times as large as they were when we first planted them. And they're just about to the point where I need to prune those lower leaves and start their training. We're going to train them up the wire, uh, up a string to this uh, trellis here. And we're going to hang a hook here with a lot of string on it that we can unroll as we need to. And all these tomato varieties here will go up and grow infinitely, hopefully giving us lots of tomatoes. And there's poor Lucy, a reminder of our freeze. 14 degrees is not nice on a citrus tree, and uh, Lucy's coming out. So, But over here, look at these eager beavers. These are my apple tree, uh, and they're, these are my apple tree starts, and they're looking really good. Over here we've got one that is already starting to grow its main leader, and that's looking nice and healthy. And we've got this eager one over here putting on these beautiful blossoms. So... Uh, yeah, lots of growth going on here. I love it. Blackberries are starting to get healthy. That one in the middle especially. That one hasn't quite woken up, but it's starting to put on some buds now. Blackberries down in this uh, grow bag. These are my backups. Maybe they should have been my primary guys. They're doing great. Yeah, so everything's looking nice. Everything's waking up. That scraggly little pepper plant's putting on some green foliage down below. I'll come and trim off some of that dead stuff. Goji berry, it's nice and bushy now, and uh, things are looking great. This area will have these trees growing in them, and they're going to get, you know, not real big, I'm going to keep them small, so I should be able to use the ground in this area for other things. And so what I'm thinking of doing is plugging in some pumpkin pits in this area and letting those vines just kind of cover this ground over here and help to suppress the, 
the regrowth of the Bradford pear trees that used to be over there. Uh, those Bradford pears, you know, they want to they want to come up, and I'm having to clip them down. So, yeah, we'll put some ground cover in over there and make use of that space. Pollinator attractor garden. All the seeds that were in here that were direct sown have come up, and I've plugged in a few different kind of plants in here as well. So yeah, spring is sprung. It's hot. Let's go see how hot it is. What is the temperature today? It is 85, 86. Yeah, it's it's warm. There's a couple projects I've got going on. These are my sweet potatoes. I'm growing sweet potato slips so that we can plant them out in our summer garden. So I've got some small tubers and some of the misshapen tubers that were difficult to peel from our crop last year. Store them in the garage. Now they're buried in this potting soil and they'll do their thing down there and up will come some slips. We can break those off and plant them. Here is one of the muscadine vines that I saved from over where my uh, Bradford pears, pear trees were. This one was a, a surplus one and I let it grow up into that tree. And this was all I was able to get from it, but you can see it survived the freeze. It's starting to bud out. So were these. These muscadines are starting to bud out too. I'm glad they survived. I was pretty sure they would, but you know, until you see the green budding out like that, it's always a sketchy kind of waiting period. But looking good. Hey, thanks for joining me today on Black Umbo Southern Gardening. I hope you like our channel and subscribe. If you like our content, please share it. Like us on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening to you. Bye-bye.